microphone. Hello, everyone. Hi, my, my name is Bronia Greshkovicheva Chang. I am the Associate Director of the Afro Latin American Research Institute. It is my pleasure to welcome you here today on behalf of the Hutchins Center and the Afro Latin American Research Institute Brazil Studies Program at Dr. Class at the Fellows Colloquium and a Lori Mosley Seminar Series on Afro Latin American Studies with Dr. Antonia Gabriela Pereira de Araujo. <laughs> She's this year's Mammal and Visiting Fellow at the Hutchins Center for African and African American Research. She has a PhD in Social Anthropology from Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, Master in Sociology from the Federal Univers University of Ceará, and she's the founder of the Black Community Library Casa Futuro that creates community projects on racial literacy. She's a member of the Committee of Black Anthropologists of Brazilian Association of Anthropology, um, Dr. Araujo has been working with, um, since 2020 as an advisor to the government of Ceará on affirmative action and racial quota policies. She's also an artist, poet, and a writer. In 2020, she received a full scholarship to present her performance, Autonomia Erotica, at the second Black Women of the Future workshop organized by the Afrofuturist Black Quantum Futurism Collect Collective in Philadelphia. Her most recent publication is the article, Creating Forces is Creating Quilombos, Female Boxers, Tactical Collectivity, and Community Activism of Young Black Women in Brazil. She published in Transition Magazine the article, Corpos Crudos, Black Female Boxers in Cuba and Brazil. She's currently specializing in expanding her latest research focused on topics such as the body, racial justice, self-defense, racialization, feminization, and hypersexualization of black women in Brazil. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Araujo in this wonderful space of hip-hop archive, where she will present her paper, Rasudas, Jinga Muscular Ontology Among Black Brazilian Girls. I will just make a small comment on the logistics. Mateus Guza will help us with translation of Q&A after she has finished with her presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bronia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Krishnan. Uh, thank you, Mateus. Thank you uh, to my family, boxers, and the friends uh, in online, uh, especially for my English teacher, teacher Rafael Domingos. It, it, is, uh, it is with great joy uh, that I honor and ask permission for my ancestors to make this presentation. And today is Friday, and every Friday is Oxalá Day. Oxalá, he is Orisha, who makes war to fight in peace. Who makes war to fight in peace. There is a uh, song in, in Yoruba for Oshala uh, that sings like this. O fururu o orere la yababa kene 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 lejibo. This song talk about, talks about the meanings with Oxalá Orisha. When you dance for Oxalá uh, Orisha, you dance like this. Let me try to show you. <laughs> this body is curved, and uh, you dance like slowly, slowly, very slowly, like this. Like this. O pururu, o orere, la yababa, kene, 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 lele, jibu. Ilei fomo, duaba, 
Baba, é de Borere, Mojo, Baô. Very slowly, very slowly, but more slowly the, like this. But with jinga. Jinga is different the swing. It's jinga. And I begin begin uh, talk about jinga because jinga is very important to understand jinga activity. Um, um, the body moves la like, like this slowly, but with jinga. The jinga is the beginning of a what I call jinga activity. And I want to start by talking about the movement of the body because why does the body matter? Why does movement the body matter in contexts of urban policy violence? Why does the body inform about the embodiment of the escape? Well, the presentation I'm going to show you today is a small part of the book project I am writing. In this book project, I am interested in presenting evidence about the ontological and political project of what it is to be and become a black woman in contemporary Brazil, especially in the context of the favelas that experience the implementation of a public security programs set as the so-called pacifying policy units, PPUs or UPPs in Portuguese. These programs are civil policy posts that are installed within the territories of the favelas. These programs are implemented as public secur security actions, actions in the state of Rio de Janeiro and also with the justification of fighting drug trafficking and creating a friendly relationship between civil policy officers and the community. But as Marielle Franco argued in her dissertation, these programs have only intensified gun violence, urban militarization, the genocide of black youth, and the penalization state in Brazil. Sorry. The material I use in writing my book project is the result of my doctoral thesis, research defended in 2021, and which has has one of the central theories, the corporalities of black girls is revealers of persistent political histories. During four years, I conducted engaged research using field research methods, interviews, and archive research. Well, my field research began in 2016 in Complexo da Maré, three years after the implementation of the pacifying policy units, PPUs, in that territory. The increased presence of black girls from this community practicing martial arts in the same period of the implementation of militarization programs in this space caught my attention. And I wanted to know what, what those black girls are doing with their bodies in these contexts of militarization. So I decided to pursue the cor corporalities that were being made at, at the moment in Complex da Maré. In particular, by following the daily lives of black girls in and out of boxing jeans. After all, how were the contexts of militarization of the favelas activating bodily memories and bring it to the surface of a consciousness warrior spirit. My research is based on interviews with girls between the ages of 16 and 27. And I would like to highlight that in my book project, the categoric black girls is a claim and the uh, epistemological choice 
that I make. It is not an infantilization, infantilization of young black girls, but I want to avoid the adultization of girls and avoid relegating them to a stigmatized place, to this end. I claim the category of black girls as a self-possession gateway. This is a three-session presentation. Session one shows the soundscape of the favela and scenes emphasizing black girls creating physicalities of self-defense. Session two, I show what I call rasuda and gingativity muscular ontology. In session three, I show the archives of Beatriz Nascimento about Quilombo. Well, the research for my book project was done on the streets of Complex da Maré, in the boxing gyms, and, and in the homes of the girl fighters. So I ask permission to invite everyone to enter to Complex da Maré with me. But first, let me start with a confession. This, this work is not intended to historicize boxing, nor to study uh, the history of women's sports. My research is interested in study about the body, race, and culture, and the boxing gyms appears as an intimate place of contestation re regarding racial relations in the favelas. Session one, racialization, militarization of favelas in Brazil. Today is the 16th of February, 2018. It is seven in the morning, and I'm walking to the Complexo da Maré in Rio de Janeiro, one of the largest complexes of favelas in Brazil, with 140,000 inhabitants, and made up of 16 small communities. These communities that make up Complexo da Maré are made up of more than 70% of people who declare themselves to be black. With more than 40% of these families being from the Northeast or descendants of immigrants from the Northeast of Brazil. A large part of the population, including the black girls, work selling snacks on the streets or cleaning jobs, for example, as hourly housekeepers. These people live on a monthly income of $100 to $300 per month. On that morning in the year 2018, the climate in Complex da Maré was hotter than on other days. I walk about 50 minutes every day to get to the boxing gym, and on the, that day, the movement was noisier than usual. The local commerce in the streets, the people's, gar the people, cars, cars, guns, and motorcycles were more intense. The Complex da Maré had once again been the target of a military operation. And that morning, the rhythm of the local commerce and the drug trade was trying to return to, re to its daily rhythm. Some teenagers were carrying guns on street corners in a more in attentive way, while others continued to trade narcotics in small plastic bags with their price tags. And I get lost in the middle of the traffic of people and the movement of having to go up and down the sidewalks due to the installation of drug sales points. And the widow real, uh, realizing it, I end up following on a sidewalk and arriving in the middle of a circle of five young people, each one carrying a machine gun. My body tries to act freely and I try not to look into the boy's eyes. I lower my head and leave the, the circle as if nothing had happened. It is true that the feeling was tense not only for me, but 
It was tense inside the houses, in the boxing gym, on the streets, and everywhere in the community. Um, after this walk, I arrived at the gym where I met the black boxes every day. They showed me the marks of gunfire shot by the police on the hours of the project resulting from the conflicts that had happened the night before in the favela and exclaimed, it is war, it is war. You had to see the shouting last night here. The bodies are, in, are inside the boxing gym. The train starts. Let's listen now to some sounds of bodies. Closed hands and strong fists are punted in the air. A mixture of the sounds of shoes rubbing against the ground and the deep sighs are also sounds of the ginga body. In Brazil, the term ginga derives from, the, from an imaginary of conflicts and negotiations. Some historians, said as, as Pedro Abibi, point out that the term derives from the political actions of Queen Ginga of Angola against Portuguese colonizers. As in Capoeira, and also in a Candobar circle, as anthropologist Marlene Cunha showed, Ginga or Gincado is the unbalance and transition to the center of the body. The Ginga appears as a fundamental, fundamental movement in boxing. If we, it is true that, as the traditional of the Malink people from the Malin Peru says, there is no movement without rhythm. In box, it is no different. They say that every boxer will only be a good fighter when they have their particular rhythm. As you can see in this photo, Miriam, the name of these boxers, is known in boxing for her particular rhythm. This rhythm is necessary to have ginga. The ginga in box is done in circular movements, almost staggering as the fighter's body dodges and enervates blows. In circular movements and finds balance. When a black girl creates her own ginga, it is like she creates a body language of escape. That same ginga movement is what Miriam told me was necessary to walk and to run in the streets of Complex da Maré. Miriam says, don't get stiff, never stop it. Otherwise, you are gonna fall. When you walk these streets, be careful. Walk fast and with a flexible, a flexible body to the sand and climb obstacles. obstacles. The train ends. Session two, black girls, racism, and the double consciousness. At another time, another boxer told me the following story. When I was a child, the wild girls at school called me Hasuda. Here, the, te the term Hasuda is used to say that a girl has endless strength and a sense of voluptuousness. Most of the black girls who were interviewed talk about cases of racism they have experienced during their teens as motivators for practicing martial arts. Despite the lived racialization on other bodies, the black girls give new meanings to the expression hasuda, sometimes playing with these expressions to create trouble. 
on one of the boxers says, I love my body big and tough. It causes fear and sometimes causes trouble to define if I am more uh, of a man or, sorry, if I am more of a man or more of a woman, if I am more feminine or masculine, if I am lesbian or straight. I would like to highlight two important points. One, one hand, if the black girls are giving new meanings to the racialization of their bodies, on the other hand, these new meanings are given from a subjectivity for that in the double consciousness. Since their childhood, they experienced the sensation of looking at themselves through the eyes of others, as W.E.B. Du Bois describes in his work, The Souls of the Black Folk, quote, of measuring the souls through the eyes of a road that views it with contempt, unquote. In my book project, the concept of double consciousness is crucial to understand the construction of what it means to be and become a black woman in Brazil. But I also follow the most complex trace of double consciousness to show what I call gingativity muscular ontologies. Let's listen to this audio of the sounds of body working. In this audio, we hear the coach who exclaims, let's work, let's work, it's time to work. Don't lower your head, move your body, jing, protect your chest. I don't want to see death here, let's go, good warrior. The bodies enter almost into a trance. They scream, murmur, and moan, moan. The expressions of encouragement for the fight are related to the imaginary of war. It is interesting to note that impact of the militarization scenario on their lives is reflected in the language used during training, where allusions to war. But when I directly question black girls about these scenarios of militarization, they prefer not to say much information. This is one more reason that led me to follow them in their daily lives and body practice since the violence was affecting the body at the most intimate level of speech. In this sense, what do black girls that create self-defense informants? The self-defense practice are safe repositories of insurrections against racial violence. Looking at the military interventions in the Complexo da Maré as a continuum of the violence of captivity, and the favelas as contemporary quilombos, we can see the bodies become a living archive of this history that persists today. In this context, the bodies become a body archive. Let's observe the narrative of one of the black boxers. My grandmother told me to fight from an early age. She told me that for us to live here in the favela, we have to learn how to create strength. We have to be strong in your head and body. Here, the dimension of the body and archive appears bringing this dimension of the body that is forged in the exercise of creating strength. The dimension of creating strength 
is being strong involves a physical plane, but it also has a physical plane. It involves a strength that is inscribed in the flesh. Being a black girl from the favela and become a black woman from the favela involves a muscular ontology that they, that they themselves call rassuda. They exclaim, to be black in the favela, you need to have raça, you have to be rassuda. And finally, getting wit on the bodies, I would like to highlight my book's concentration on the concept of flesh. This concept is used to understand what I call muscle ontology. I pursue the concept of flesh by Hortense Spiller to highlight the Hasuda bodily productions as ontologies made across flesh, on flesh, and within flesh. Flesh, as Spiller states, is genderless female flesh and functions as an archive record of the marks of violence on the body in captivity. In my work, the flesh appears as a part literal and symbolical that provides the narrative of the production of corporalities interlinked by the contexts of racialization, police violence, and racism. However, in ambivalent counterpoint, it is across the flesh that black girls create a new way of acting in the road. Hence, I create a new concept that reveals the potence of flesh, both in the literal and metaphysical sense. Session three, we black women of Hasudo's bodies, bodies fed by collective memories. I would like to bring some photos from social media of black girls fighters. In the first photo, above on the left, we have a photo of a woman 45 years old practicing boxing in the project for women, in Portuguese, Praelas. This project was created by black girls to, to teach older women self-defense practice. The training takes a place in the streets and squares of Complex da Maré. I bring this photo in particular because the picture shows the project's the shirt with its name and the symbol. The symbol of the project is a raised arm with a closed fist, the same symbol of the Black Panther movement, demonstrating how the self-defense project has a racial political meaning. The initial name of the project would be Women of War, but they chose a more friendly name to get support from huge institutions. I bring this information so that we can visualize how this self-defense is carried out as a corporal practice fed collective memory and that forged the process of being and become a black woman. In the second image, above on the, on the right, we have the boxes called Juicy, with the following caption, delicate, but don't be deceived. Here, I bring to the light the debate of racial gender and show how these black girls are playing with the boundaries of masculinity and femininity. In the third photo, we have the semi boxers announcing boxing as her refuge, as a place where the body feels the feeling of freedom. In the last image, we have the boxers Rebecca, who started boxing at the age of 10, expression in the caption. Brief for those who have already died and fight for those who can no, no longer fight. And at the end, set the racists on fire.
And here, I would like to emphasize an important point. The post was made shortly after the assassination of parliamentary Marielle Franco. Right after this political crime, I talked to the black girls uh, and we agreed to meet at the political act against the assassination of Marielle Franco, a black parliamentarian who lived in Complex da Maré. On the agri day, uh, the girls didn't go to the political act. And on another occasion, when I met them at the boxing gym, they were fighting and training as if it were a normal day. And they told me, now we need to train and fight har harder. We have to be stronger and never give up on our people. I bring these photos and captions as part of my book project where I discuss community sense, activism, and black subjectivity. Besides, I also bring these photos to discuss the power of photography to shape perceptions about race, political justice, and the right to self-representation as Frederick Douglass outlined in his book, Pictures and Progress. Now, uh, here are some archives by Beatriz Nascimento from her research on quilombos in Africa and Brazil in the 20th century. Here we have two pieces of news from the newspaper Mergulho from the year 1990. One of the news is by Beatriz Nascimento, Brazilian historian, writing about quilombo. Quilombo is a type of Brazil, uh, quilombo is, quote, uh, a type of Brazilian settlement inhabited by escaped slavers and their descendants, unquote. Here, we also have news about capoeira as the art of escape um, for blacks in the 20th century. I bring these two pieces of news to highlight two important points of my research. First, these black girls are not practicing capoeira, but can we look at the ginga as a continuum to the art escape of escape? Second, the concept of quilombo as used by Beatriz Nascimento helped me to think ab about the concept of escape, ginga, of heavy raça, cre creating strength, and being Hasuda as part of the same historical crossing. Now, to illustrate this historical crossing that involves the physical and metaphysical dimensions, I'm going to show uh, some small parts of the movie Ori, written by Beatriz Nascimento in 1989. Here, she brings insights from her study about quilombos in Africa and Brazil. There are three small parts. Daí a pergunta do negro nesse processo relacionado com o quilombo. Quem é quilombo? O que é o quilombo hoje? É para o seu povo e para você. O quilombo surge do fato histórico que é a fuga. É o ato primeiro de um homem que não reconhece que é propriedade de outro. Daí a importância da migração, a importância da busca do território. Cabia às mulheres no quilombo o sustento dos guerreiros. Cabia às mães preparar o alimento 
e colocar nas florestas, não só para ofendar aos seus mitos é, arcaicos, mas para também alimentar o fugitivo. Cabia a mulher sustentar a fuga. Ok. I carried out extensive research in Beatriz Nascimento archives and I bring her research as an imperative of the present and not only of the facts on the past. And finally, let's watch the past, uh, the last part. It is a small part. A investigação sobre quilombo se baseia e parte da questão do poder. Por mais que uma, um sistema social domine, é possível que se crie aí dentro um sistema diferencial. E é isso que o quilombo é. Só que não é um estado de poder no sentido que a gente entende, poder político, poder de dominação, porque ele não tem essa perspectiva. Cada indivíduo é o poder, cada indivíduo é o quilombo. Beatriz Nascimento defined the quilombo beyond the concept of territory. For Beatriz Nascimento, the quilombo is the body itself when it practices gestures in order not to be captured. In my book project, I bring evidence of how the creation of this Hasudo body happens at the same time as the creation of the black subjectivity of resistance, resistance, overcome, and confrontation. It is during adolescence and the phases of being young that this subjectivity takes shape. Thus, the black girl is the gateway to understand what happens inside and outside the body in contexts of racialization. These subjectivities gain a more complex dimension in contexts of violence and militarization of favelas. In this sense, bodily self-defense practice appear that take place inside the flesh and transcend the flesh into muscle. It is this physical and metaphysical subjectivity that I call gingativity muscular ontology. I define it like this. Ontology because it is a way of being and living in the face of racism, racialization, and armed violence. Muscular because it is made across the flesh, within the flesh, and on the flesh. But above all, it transcends the flesh and becomes muscle. Then, jingativity because this way of being in the road material, materializes in gestures of escape, gestures of jinga, a muscular ontology materialized in jinga body movements so that the body forgets the confinement of captivity. Finally, being hasuda is an experienced lived and forget in the crossroad between creating a subjectivity that cannot be captured and at the same at the same time escaping from the structures of racial domination creating into the body a war camp thank you thank you very much. Comments and questions? Gosh, thank you so much you for your it. talk. Yes, I, um, I don't know what to say. It's, it's, it's an on. Anyway, I'll, I'll forget, I'll, in the corridors, <laughs> I'll say the other parts. But you gave us multiple um, parallel systems 
of militarization, although we only, we, 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 you use the word when it was a state and negative. So I, so I don't want the word to be militarization, something like um, preparing the body for war. So we have the state doing that against black people, for example, against poor people. Then you have the, the, the usual way we tend to think about um, fugitive black bodies in Brazil, which is, which is, which is masculine and capoeira, in, mm -hmm. in my imagination. And then, and then you gave us, uh, most of your talk was on a wonderful, uh, another way of thinking about that, no, with the, with the boxers. But then, but then, as I understood it, we also have young black men armed with, with machine guns. I couldn't figure out if they were, I couldn't figure out who they were, armed by the state, armed against the state. And so my question is, to what extent do these parallel systems, if I have them right, call on each other? So for example, does, this, does, does the state the militarized state ever cynically um, appeal to capoeira or these boxers as, you know, arm yourself for the good of the nation or something like that. I don't know. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering how, how to think about them in relation to each other, if that makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. Mm. Eu não lembro como é, é responde um a um, né? Respond right now or? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Faith. Um, uh, realmente eu tento sair da dimensão é, da tradição e do homem como essa figura que carrega uma uma cultura negra. I try to leave this tradition. Um, I try to leave this tradition of the man and the, the, the culture that he brings in my research. Yes. Um, e eu investigo algumas pesquisas que falam sobre capoeira e candomblé. And I investigate a few researches that talk about capoeira and candomblé. E esse termo ginga aparece em nessas nessas manifestações tradicionais é, como sempre um movimento de escape. And this term ginga uh, appears in these uh, traditional presentations as a way of escaping. E, uh, mas eu quis fugir dessas manifestações tradicionais e também da figura do homem como é, uma pessoa de poder. É, I myself wanted to escape this re uh, uh, traditional representations of the man as a representation of power because. Porque eu eu queria trazer a imagem justamente da mulher que alimenta e sustenta toda essa esse poder de fugitividade. And I wanted, I wanted to emphasize, put emphasis on the, the role of the, the, the woman in supporting this uh, ex escapativity, this uh, leaving this system of uh, all these systems of uh, power, and, and as, as you were describing. Yes. E é verdade que a, o tráfico de drogas na favela e o boxe para os homens aparecem como lugares de busca por poder, de dominação. And it's true that the drug trafficking in the favelas and the box are spaces that men search for uh, power and to reinforce their domination. Eu entrevistei alguns alguns é, jovens na capoeira ou no boxing, desculpa, e eles disseram que era a forma deles buscarem um poder dentro da favela. I interviewed a few uh, young men uh, that uh, were doing box in the favela and it was their way to uh, achieve more power within the, that system. E não era isso que eu gostaria de mostrar na minha pesquisa. And that's not what I wanted to show in my research. Yes. Um, mas falando um pouco sobre a história da capoeira no Brasil, ela surge justamente no mesmo movimento de urbanização e higienização do espaço urbano 
e a capoeira como uma forma de protesto corporal. And just to talk about specifically about the history of capoeira in Brazil, it, it uh, comes uh, about in a way as a way to uh, as a response to the urbanization and the uh, clean, cleaning of the cities as a uh, cult, uh, corporal cultural protest, uh, protest form of protest. Finally, finalizando, e existe um estudo muito importante da Aline Torres é, que fala sobre mulheres é, que viviam lutando na, nas ruas no Rio de Janeiro no processo de urbanização do Rio de Janeiro é, e eram mulheres que tinham a prática da luta não era capoeira era uma uma luta mais livre com elas carregavam armas mulheres que acaba, a, tinham acabado de sair da escravidão então esse é um estudo muito referente para mim I have a very uh, important study that I follow from Aline Torres. Aline Torres, who research uh, uh, groups of women who uh, are used uh, fighting or uh, corporal activities as a way to resist uh, that. But it's not necessarily capoeira. They, they w used to wear guns as well, and it was a more of a free form fighting. Yes. I just wanted to, uh, the first set of questions I think was responded, but the second question, maybe you want to... Can I follow up with one thing? So to put put it this way, mm -hmm. does the state My ever state say, stand, you black woman boxing, boxing, that's boxing good boxing. because you can help us fight crime? That That's partly what I'm asking. If in a cynical way, Mr. does the state take up that, see it as a form of militarization. No. 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 The, the, it's very, is is very, um, Ou existe esse discurso do Estado falando assim, olha, não, não, não vai, é, lute no. boxe para combater o crime, coisas desse tipo. Não, não. Uh, acredito que as práticas de de se organizarem para lutar é muito autônomo. I believe that the pra practice of organizing oneself to, in order to fight is very uh, uh, comes from a place of autonomy. E muito de uma dimensão subjetiva, muito mais do que lutar com um policial. In much more of a subjective position, not rather I'm going to fight with a police officer or Thank you so much. Um, so I was just thinking about the gender dynamics within the boxing gym and the coaches or the owners or what have you, um, you know, typically are male, but they might, I don't know if that's always the case. But thinking about how the girls and the women who are in the gym, are, are they having to navigate those kinds of racial dynamics within the space and are there i'm just wondering what kinds of if you saw things or strategies for how they navigated that and i'm just thinking a lot of times you see in these gyms they there won't be a lot of women so they'll they'll create this competitiveness as opposed to collectivity um so just wondering about those kinds of gender dynamics within the space Se você viu, observou alguma coisa. Sim, sim. É complexa. Complex. Porque elas, elas estão sempre brincando com a dimensão de ser mulher ou ser homem. They're always playing with the dimension of being women, uh, women or men. Yes. Or we're playing with the gender roles. É, e alguns homens tentam provar que elas realmente têm capacidade de estar ali. Some men, alguns uh, homens tentam provar. Isso. Some men uh, are constantly testing their ability to stay there. Yes. Então, é, eu trabalho na minha pesquisa com o conceito de gênero racial. In my research, I work with the, the, the concept of um, racial gender. Racial gender. Or, and yeah, gender, gender race. And it was also genderless with the Hortense Spiller. Talks about this dimension, the trouble, the body, black body, and uh, make trouble about the dimension feminine and masculine. 
and the man and the woman fazem essa essa esse jogo they have this interplay uh, given the, this uh, uh, genderless and racial gender dimension mas principalmente o que eu quero trazer na minha pesquisa é que mesmo esse corpo racializado hiper hiper é, com essa dimensão de de uma força extrema even this uh, but I want what I want to bring in my research is that even this body that was racialized and uh, is is dealing with a, a, a strenuous amount of strength é, é desfeito elas 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 desfazem dando novos sentidos these women unmake this this racialization in this process by giving new meanings and and ginga uh, and with ginga. and also with ginga yes hey antonia thank you um i love the idea of well thank you for introducing me to the idea of like ginga and these gestures or um body movements towards freedom or body movements that are like you know uh, towards escape um, my question is about the the comparison you made or the idea of this these modern day quilombos as the favelas and you know in my mind when i think about a quilombo i think about a a space of um a space of freedom within structures of captivity and my question for you is um the favelas these modern day spaces um that you compare to the quilombos, would you consider these to be spaces of freedom or spaces in which is this a continual working towards freedom? If that, I hope that makes sense. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking about just my own experiences in, in black neighborhoods in Atlanta and how I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't compare them to being free spaces. Mm. Sure. Thank you. It's very interesting this is question. Thank you. Mm. But eu poderia dizer que, a fav que as favelas no Brasil não poderiam ser comparadas com bairros pobres dos Estados Unidos. I I I can I could say that the favelas in Brazil can't be compared to uh, poor neighborhoods of the United States. First. Second, um, esses espaços de Or at least it's hard to compare in her perspective. Yeah. E esses espaços de favelas no Brasil, eles eram antigos quilombos, eram espaços que realmente as pessoas se refugiaram e hoje receberam nomes de favelas. So, previously, favelas were these quilombo spaces where they use, uh, uh, escape to find, find refuge. And, but now these spaces transformed into what we know as a favela. Yeah. E um ponto muito importante da minha pesquisa é a criminalização desses espaços e a militarização desses espaços, o que os torna ruim de se viver. And one of the big points of my research is that there is a high process of militarization and criminalization of these spaces, which makes them very bad to live. Um, por exemplo, existem um, muitas manifestações culturais que é, são praticadas dentro desses espaços que são expressões de liberdade. For, for example, there are many, many cultural expressions that happen within the favelas who are, uh, which are expressions of freedom. Samba, uh, funky, uh, anyways. Samba, Brazilian funk, for instance. Yes. Uh, thank you, thank you. Hi, Antonia. Thank you so much for a beautiful presentation and for thank you for thank you, thank you. performing for us. Um, <laughs> That's right, right. Yes. <laughs> it's very touching, uh, very moving. Um, I was just wondering, out of curiosity, if you've ever considered uh, examining 
like MMA, mixed martial arts gyms. I'm just thinking of the rich tradition of martial arts in Brazil, and I know that MMA is a space where women command a lot of power in professional sports on a global stage. And anyway, I, I'm just curious to know if you've ever thought of you know, moving between boxing spaces and MMA gyms. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I I I told I I um eu eu pesquisei em algumas outras artes marciais. I researched in a few other art martial arts, not only box. Mas o meu interesse atual é expandir a pesquisa para outras práticas corporais. But my interest now is to expand the research to other uh, body practices, not only arts or sports. Not only sports. Mas fugindo também da dimensão de práticas tradicionais afro-brasileiras. But also uh, leaving the dimension of the uh, afro-Brazilian body practices. Porque o meu interesse é entender a ontologia muscular da gingatividade para além para além da tradição e da cultura. Because my interest is to understand this process of muscular ontology, gingativities, beyond cultural processes or cultural dimensions. Acho que, just to, to clarify, acho que a pergunta dela tem a ver se, se você não conduziu nenhuma pesquisa no espaço de MMA ou você, ou você não teria interesse em continuar nesse, ou uhum. investigar nesse não. espaço. So yeah, no, 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 no research done no. on, on MMA, MMA spaces, but given the, the direction of the research, perhaps this could be a space, uh, but she wants to investigate this for the outside of sports, necessarily. Yes. Thank you, Manza. Hi, Antonia, thank you very much. Um, there's it's really lots to think about, and I'm, I was really interested um, in your concept of how the militarization of the favelas is a continuation of the violence of captivity and slavery. Um, and the bodies being a living archive. Um, it's really interesting to me that, you know, like the Dutch famine has been studied, how, um, you know, there's genetic memory in that the Dutch famine, the children that were born afterwards um, experience obesity, but black people have never really been studied when we've been through so many cycles of trauma in different spaces. Um, but that's just stuff that you've got me thinking about. It's not really the question. <laughs> um, the, the question it's about, it's about. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's related, it's related. Um, the question is really close to the end. We're, we're watching the film and the definition of the quilombo which I imagine, I mean, from that, what I was getting was that the quilombo is being moved from the definition of a geographic space to a personal space. And I imagine the, so I then start to imagine the jingativity as quilombo in movement, um, which is to say, I create this personal space and I move so you cannot ca capture it. And it seems to me like, like there are two processes. One is um, self-definition in terms of gender, race, and just kind of claiming from other people their ability to define. And then there's an element of state um, limitation of the possibilities for people who grow up within the system. So which one, which one would be the quilombo? Would it be the, the, the resistance of the state limitation or the definition of um, the self-definition and which is the, the jingativity? <laughs> could, could you explain the second state a little bit better? What the definite limitations of state? Yes, of, of state. state, state st basically, if you if you're if you're a black body, mm -hmm. the state limits what you can be because it's structurally racist. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
um estado é autentificação, o outro estado é, é o corpo negro em relação a, ao, ao racismo estrutural. Então, Sim. O que, que é esse quilombo movimento? Do qual desses dois ele está escapando? Dos dois. I, I hope it makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, we can, clar we can uh, explain as we go, but... Uh, but thank you. Thank you, Nis. Very ama amazing in these perceptions about my research. is about... Eu queria ser bióloga quando era mais nova. I wanted to be a biology person when I was younger. Talvez já seria o meu espírito querendo entender o trauma genético. I, I think this would be my spirit to understand the genetic trauma that you mentioned. Yes. Then, um, eu penso que o conceito de trauma genético tem muito a ver quando eu trago o conceito de carne. Uh, the, the concept of uh, genetic trauma that you brought, I think it has a lot to do with this uh, work because I'm bringing the concept of flesh here. E existem longos capítulos na minha dissertação There are many chapters in my dissertation where I falando sobre é, todo o processo que elas fazem para transformar o corpo em músculo. All the process where I speak about all the processes that those uh, women transform their bodies into muscle. Então eu crio um conceito de prisma multivalente carne músculo. And by there I, I refer to this as a process of uh, multi uh, valent prism of transformation of body into muscle. Flesh. In in, fresh into muscle. In the muscle. Muscle. Yeah. muscle. Yes. Then uh, I think this, this process is about escape of the static structure and the escape uh, of its subjectivity, the captivity. Is, I, in, in the sense, uh, yes to b these both processes, denying the uh, self-representation and denying uh, or escaping uh, self uh, definitions from others and escaping uh, 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 state of mm -hmm. oppression. But you want to clarify? Uh, I was just going to say, if, so if you are going to create a hierarchy of definition of negativity and quilombo, would they be within the same nexus or would one be more important? Eles estariam no mesmo plano ou um seria mais importante que o outro? Interessante. Quilombo, como Beatriz Nascimento define, é o próprio é o próprio corpo que foge. É Quilombo, as defined by Beatriz Nascimento, is also not only a geographic space but also the body that that escapes. Então, é, eu faço uma, não uma analogia, mas eu estendo o conceito, olhando é, o conceito de negativity muscular ontology is more about inside. É, é, é o processo interno, é mais sobre o processo interno. Uh, um, what I'm trying to do with this concept of quilombo is extending its concept into gingativity uh, to think about the internal or the sub sub a subjectividade or yeah. the subjectivities of those women. Motumba, primeiramente, obrigado por trazer nosso pai Oxalá aqui nesse espaço, a Harvard, a Cambridge. Minha pergunta é sobre a escolha do, do espaço de, de bo do boxe, como a, entre as outras artes marciais, porque, por uma parte, achei muito convincente essa ideia de pensar a guinga dessas mulheres como tendo continuidade com a capoeira. Então, minha pergunta é, por que o boxe e não outros espaços de aquilombamento? É, é, é uma questão de é, segurança, estou pensando a, 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 é, o racismo religioso no nas favelas é, cariocas hoje em dia, né? É, então sim, porque eu, é, qual é a particularidade do espaço de boxe comparado com uma roda de capoeira, com um terreiro, com a, é, a escolha dessas mulheres para aquilombar-se? Obrigado. Thank, thank you, Chris. Thank you for making this question. Thank you for bringing um, uh, Oxalá into this space. 
um, I, my question is why box? Why not other um, martial arts or capoeira? Why, what is in particular uh, of box that you think that is representing uh, this, this uh, process? Um, existe um, uma, um entendimento de que sempre que se pratica uma tradição africana ou afro-brasileira, there is an understanding that every time that one practices uh, an uh, African or Afro-Brazilian tradition, você está falando sobre negritude, necessariamente existe negritude ali. Necessarily there is, um, uh, how to translate negritude? Blackness, blackness. Uh, into that space. Yeah, blackness, yes. black consciousness. Yes. Necessarily, you're speaking about black consciousness in that space. Yes. Then, o meu interesse de pesquisa não é falar sobre uma identidade construída é, por grandes estruturas. My interest is not speaking to, in my research is not to speak about the identities uh, built by big, the large structures. Yes mas é, que mesmo apesar de não de não falar sobre negritude essas meninas estão construindo o quilombo dentro de si. So I uh, I'm not to talk specifically about uh, without talking about these higher structures they are building their own I, without the the need of an identity from the higher structures they are building their own identity through uh, themselves. Eu tô, um, porque eu estou interessada em entender a experiência racial vivida e não identidades construídas por um ativismo de fora. I'm interested in the real uh, lived experience of racialization and not an identity built from the outside in. Yes, then... Um, Eu respondi a sua questão, quando, consegui. Quando, quando, quando você está dentro desse espaço, porque é o boxe, né? Porque é o boxe, Sim. nesse sentido. Porque quando você está dentro Sim. desse espaço, não é... Ah, é lá. Ok. É, porque, principalmente, é, existem muitos espaços de boxe dentro da Maré e eu não encontrei nenhum espaço de capoeira. Há muitos boxing uh, spaces within the favela, the complex of favela of the Maré, but there are, I couldn't find any capoeira spaces. Então eu entendi que, mesmo sem uma prática tradicional, elas estavam construindo as suas próprias subjetividades aquilombadas. And through Boxy, I understood that even without the traditional uh, African or Afro-Brazilian practice, they were building their own uh, uh, identities that relate to quilombo or a quilombed identity. E principalmente porque eu acho que é, elas encontraram no box uma forma de trazer o cenário de militarização para uma forma é, positiva. And they, in box, they transformed a space of militarization and aggression into something positive. Oi, Antônia, muito obrigada por la, pela sua apresentação. Um, Excusas pelo meu portunho, mas eu espero no que problem. você entenda o que eu quero, <risos> o que eu quero falar para você. Né? Um, uh, são como mais ou menos duas perguntas. A primeira é se existe de fato uma, como um limite de, de idade para ficar no, na, na academia de boxe. Né? Você fala do um, Black Girls. É, mas eu não sei se de fato, sabe, existe uma, uma, uma idade que você deve ter para fazer parte do, da academia, né? Não que você fala, não, se você tem 40 não pode vir, mas mais ou menos que que passa aí na, na idade das pessoas que participam na academia de boxe. É, e eu, eu também queria saber se você falou com elas do futuro, sabe? Como é que elas veem esse, esse corpo de mulher negra no futuro, né? Como é que elas veem esse 
a quilombaje, a quilombados, esos cuerpos a quilombados, no futuro, como que si no están, si, si aún siguen la academia de box, o si ellos ven los sus cuerpos fuera de esa academia. I'll try to briefly summarize the question. Do you have any age limit to define black girls? Is there a, an age that you're calculating? And second, how did you, how in your uh, qualitative research, have you had uh, any conversations about the future or the aspirations or the ima future imaginations of these uh, black girls, as in how do they see themselves beyond being boxers or how do you see themselves mm -hmm. outside? Apologies, thank you for the correction. Eu, será que eu entendi sua questão? A, a, a primeira é se, se você definiu um limite de idade, por exemplo, a uma mulher de é, 40 anos. Eu entendi anos, agora essa segunda. A segunda é. Uh, the second. Repita, por favor. Se há um, é uma limite de idade. Essa eu entendi. O que, é que espera? Certo. Então, como é que eles veem? Porque o, o Academia da Tática de Boxe permite eles fazerem um quilombagem no corpo. Se eles veem elas mesmas dentro da, da, da academia de box ou se eles veem afora, como é que esse quilombaje vai, vai, vai continuar? Entendi. Thank you. Thank you, Angélica. Adorei sua questão, porque eu posso trazer a dimensão que é muito presente no meu estudo sobre presente, passado e futuro, temporalidades circulares. I really liked your question because I can bring uh, the circular time that I, uh, I understand my, my research, past, present, and future. Overlapping. And, and no, uh, overlapping, yeah. And essas meninas estão fazendo box é, com a idade entre 15 a 25 anos. Right. É a idade permitida dentro dos ginásios também. So the, 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 these women are between 15 and 25 years old. These are the, the expected age in the, the gyms as well, é, or permitted age in the gym. Mas o principal motivo que eu uso black girls é porque elas sempre estão me relatando de experiências da adolescência ou da infância de and racismo. The reason why I use the black girls is that they are always report, uh, really uh, talking about experiences of racism racism ex, uh, that they experienced when they were younger. Yes. Então, passado, presente e futuro estão no mesmo corpo de, de, dessas mulheres que me, me cedem entrevistas. So, past, present and future are living at the same time at the moment that they're giving interview for me. E o futuro é isso. Eu, eu só posso é, ser Eu só posso sobreviver e ser no mundo se eu é, me transformar, se eu, se eu construir esse quilombo, essa ontologia dentro de mim que supera, que enfrenta e que é, resiste. E é o futuro. O futuro é como eu posso construir essa nova ontologia que overcome, vai além, resiste essa coisa que me prevence to become whatever I want. Então elas elas percebem que as mulheres mais velhas não podem lutar dentro dos ginásios como elas e elas criam um projeto para elas, mas que inicialmente era desculpa, é, mulheres de guerra para mulheres acima de 40 anos. Pode repetir. Então, é, falando de futuro, elas elas criam um projeto chamado para elas que não pode é, que é para mulheres acima de 40 anos. Yeah, so speaking about future, they created a project called for 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 yeah. her, them or para elas for for the her, for hers um, that are is a project specifically designed for women uh, over 40. Yes. E elas e elas ensaiam nas é, ensaiam eu na dança. E elas treinam nas ruas, fazem é, aulas para um público enorme e as mulheres vão e praticam 
que estão ali e tem muito uma criação de realmente essa dimensão de um ethos que precisa ir para a guerra, de um ethos que precisa levantar e estar sempre pronto para a guerra. And they train a lot in the streets, and they also uh, create, co-create this ethos that is always needed to go to war, or always need to be ready for war, for the battle. Thank you. Three more questions. Jan, Kamali, and Kendra. So thank you so much for your uh, talk, and I really look forward to your book. I guess I just wanted to know if you could talk a little bit more about the sounds that you captured in the gym and why what, why you think they matter. For me, it, it felt like, based on everything you were saying, a soundtrack of resistance, but I'm hoping you could just elaborate more on why that was important for you as an anthropologist. Obrigada, ou muito obrigada pela sua questão, muito interessante porque Os sons fazem a minha a minha pesquisa. The sound, thank you for the question. Uh, very interesting. The sounds really make my research. Uh, make the research happen. Yes. The soundscape makes the favela, the rhythm the favela. Existe um, um ponto importante na minha pesquisa que é sobre o ritmo. É sobre o ritmo de vida, sobre o ritmo que se tem que ter para levar a vida na favela. Então, eu gostaria muito de, de ter conseguido gravar. A very important point in my research is the rhythm and the, the rhythm that dictates the rhythm of uh, everyday life in the favela and and how that that is important and I I, I wish I could record. Uh -huh. Eu gostaria de ter gravado os sons das ruas, mas o fato da do tráfico e do enfim da a possibilidade não não dava a possibilidade de ficar com equipamentos nas nas ruas. And I wish I could have recorded also the streets and the movements of the street. However, due to the you know uh, specific situations of security, given this recording, I couldn't I couldn't I could not have I couldn't done that. I mean. Então é, os sons importam porque eles Eles constituem esses corpos raçudos, os sons da luta, os sons da música mesmo e os sons das ruas. So the sounds are very important because they make this raçudo body, this body that can take a, take a lot because of the sound of the training, the sound of the music surrounding and the sounds of the streets. Hi, Antonia. Thank you for Thank embarking you. on a project that's very culturally relevant, especially in a masculine dominated society. I know boxing is mainly um, taken up by males, and the fact that you are focusing on women is mm -hmm. something that I relate to. I know we've had conversations about your dissertation and how you wanted to make the women that you work with um, hyper visible. So I was wondering how you go about that process of making them hyper visible. how do you expect to make that, or how do you hope to have that, uh, make that hypervisual? Yeah, I'm saying how does she work um, with the women to make them hypervisible or stand out in a society that's uh, dominated by men? Como você faz na sua pesquisa para trabalhar com as mulheres para fazer elas serem colocadas em evidência na sociedade também? Interesting question. <laughs> Thank you, Tamari, thank you. Uh, eu compartilho muito da, também das suas visões e pesquisas. I share a lot of interest with your visions and research. Uh, muito obrigada por ser referência também. Thank you for being a reference in that as well. É, o modo como eu trago essa visibilidade é, das mulheres de um modo positivo 
para o mundo e para a sociedade. The way that I bring that visibility to those women for the society and for the world is é dizendo que que sim existe uma racialização é, estrutural que as coloca como fortes e isso é muito ruim por um is, lado is by saying yes on one side uh, there is a process of racialization that that puts them as strong and that that's bad but, but por outro the lado other side, you know that side um, elas estão brincando com a dimensão do corpo delas ser grande e hipervisível. And they are playing with that their own bodies and making them look stronger and more visible. Vou dar dois exemplos. I'll give you two examples. É, em várias situações, elas diziam que passavam nas ruas e os, os caras, os homens, pessoas tinham medo delas porque elas tinham um corpo grande e também porque elas eram lutadoras. In many in many instances I record them speaking about the moments where they were walking on the street and guys being afraid of them because they were like strong and they knew that they were fighters as well. So they were making fun of that. Yes. Em outra situação, é, elas trazem mais de um mundo feminino para confundir o a percepção e a tentativa de capturá-las como masculino ou feminino. In, in another instance, they bring more of the feminine, femininity, fem, the feminine side to roupas rosas, unhas grandes, uh, big nails, um, uh, pink clothing, to really uh, uh, how to say blur the idea of, of 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 them thinking of them as masculine and or attributing a specific gender role to them. E eu acredito que essa contribuição da minha pesquisa é de trazer a possibilidade delas se auto-representarem brincando com essa dimensão que as racializa é o, é o que eu acredito que é potente para elas. So I believe that the contribution of the research uh, it, that of them playing with that representation of self and, and acting on it is what gives her, them uh, power to show, uh, uh, be an evidence and change their uh, vision of how uh, society views them or, or related to your question that you asked. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you. Final question, Kimberly. Antonia. Thank you so much for this really gorgeous, layered, multivalent, multimodal presentation. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Kimberly. So the question that I have is, um, is about um, the performance that you did at the very beginning. I really wanted to know how you, how you're incorporating the performance, the bodily performance that is part dance, part um, fight, part, I'm not sure what the third part would be, and um, and the connection to the ancestors, like a kind of religiosity or spirituality within that, within the boxing space. Very interesting question. Thank you, thank you, Kimberly. Um, the como eu falei, é, o estudo de Marlene Cunha, antropóloga, é, Marlene Cunha e Beatriz Nascimento, so I, I was, I, duas, duas intelectuais brasileiras. I believe I mentioned, but the study of uh, Marlene Cunha and Beatriz Nascimento, which are two uh, in, uh, Brazilian intellectuals. Elas estavam estudando no mesmo período, em 1989, 1985, me ajuda aí, Messias, 1985, 1990. They were studying more or less, they're producing knowledge in more or less the same. Eles estavam estudando o período ou no período? Nesse período. Uh, they're studying uh, during this period, 1985, in Brazil. 1990, in Brazil. Em Brasil. E, é, e eu, eu percebo que elas estão interessadas em algo que vai para além 
do, da, do, da, do físico. And there, I, I noticed that they're studying something that is go, goes beyond the physical. Elas estão interessada em algo que continua dentro do corpo para além das estruturas atualizadas da escravidão. It, they're studying something that uh, happens, goes inside the body and continues beyond the uh, modern slavery structures. Então, Beatriz Nascimento vai estudar quilombos na África. Beatriz Nascimento goes to study the, this phenomenon of quilombo on, in Africa. E Marlene Cunha vai estudar os movimentos e gestos de liberdade no candomblé. In Ma uh, Marlene Cunha goes to study the, the freedom and, and liberation gestures within the condom candomblé uh, religion. Essas são as duas grandes referências para qual eu imagino que existe algo dentro da genética do é, existe uma genética da liberdade que continua para além da escravidão. And for this reason, I believe that there is a. Do desejo da liberdade. Desculpa, não vai. Existe algo dentro do corpo, na genética, na alma, é, que continua para além das estruturas da escravidão. And I, that's why I believe that there is something in the body, in the soul, that constitutes a genetic of freedom that transcends slavery structures or does not uh, end when there is slavery. E essa 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 genética está no candomblé nos gestos Marlene Cunha traz inúmeros gestos movimentos corporais in this genetics is is in in candomblé religion Marlene Cunha brings so many uh -huh. uh, bodily gestures and and movement um deles se chama gincado one of them is called gincado gincado que é como se fosse é, analogicamente a ginga na capoeira. Which is an, an, an analogy of ginga within capoeira. É, então eu entendo o movimento é, de box, o movimento dentro do box como análogo a esses movimentos de tentar e desejar a liberdade. And I understand these movements within boxing uh, as movements to aspire freedom and aspire liberation. Yes. Then, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My teacher online. <laughs>